myself. Uh, social mobility is 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 an honored, time honored, deeply set American value. The notion that uh, um, you know you can rise above where your grandparents or parents were, and that parents can propel you uh, to a place that is above in educational or economic or career. Uh, or other terms uh, beyond where they were. This was the kind of d profound immigrant wish for their kids and grandkids and so on. Uh, and an awful lot of other people's too. Uh, is your book essentially saying that social mobility is now gone or rare or much harder or less likely? That's, that's a, you know, it's the best of times, it's the worst of times uh, answer. It's the best of times in the following sense. If you are a really smart kid, in a backwater town in Mississippi, I don't care if you're white or black, this has never been a better time for you. It's never been easier for you to, no matter how poor your family is, to get a full ride to a really good college if, you're really, if you've got a lot of talent. We've gotten really, really good at identifying talent wherever it is, and I'm delighted about that. Here is the iron law of meritocracy that actually goes back to the bell curve. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting embarrassed about all the things that I plagiarized from the bell curve and coming apart. Well, but since, to but plagiarize but since, from since oneself, they didn't usually. Read, since they didn't read the bell curve, there was no danger in putting right. this stuff back in this book, too. <laughs> uh, look, the, the better the meritocracy, the faster social mobility will decline. Say it again. The better the meritocracy, the more efficiently you identify and reward talent, the faster that social mobility will decline over time. And the reason that that happens is because of the correlation between parents and children that I mentioned earlier and the increasing homogamy, whereby you have the successful marry the successful, and a lot of times the unsuccessful marrying the unsuccessful. You know, it used to be not only uh, noticed, but even common. Um, that you'd, you'd run into these people who were working in blue-collar jobs who were obviously bright as hell and had all sorts of interests. So your plumber might be humming Puccini uh, while he was uh, fixing your pipes because he's a big opera fan. Um, th th there, was, there was just talent in the United States as of 1900, let's say, uh, was extremely democratic. Uh, you had uh, you had no sense in which the high IQ people were in one part of town and and uh, the way you do now. Now you s I don't want to exaggerate. It is not the case that all the smartest people uh, are going to elite colleges and are successful. By no means. But if you want to say has th the pool changed? Yeah, it has. Uh, every year we draw a very large number of the most able people out of small towns, out of working class neighborhoods, out of middle class neighborhoods, and they're never going back again. And uh, furthermore, as then talent is transmitted to the next generation, if you look at the socioeconomic backgrounds of incoming kids to elite schools, they are overwhelmingly from the upper middle class. In the face of policies where these schools really, really want to get other kinds of kids. And the reason is the highest test scores and the other evidences of high academic ability are overwhelmingly coming from the upper middle class, much more so than it right. used to. And that is just a paradox of meritocracy. People ask, why is social mobility slowing faster in the United States than it is in Europe? I submit to you it's because the United States has been a whole lot better than Europe at its meritocracy for half a century now.